Morning, everyone, and welcome back to This Week in F1, or your second surprise Dutch National Anthem lesson of the week. Now this week F1 was in Jeddah for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and before we even get to qualifying Carlos Sainz appendix decided it had seen enough of Max Verstappen purple sectors and got infected. I have had enough! Enough! This is the second time an appendix has interrupted a Formula 1 season and the last time it happened Nick De Vries earned himself a seat and then promptly lost it again before Danny Rick came back, broke his wrist, giving Liam Lawson an opportunity to shine, which he took with both hands, but Helmet Marco said nah, and Danny Rick reclaimed the seat for 2024. Be that for better or worse. Of noise and distractions. You moronic shitbag. Anyway, we will get to all that, um, noise later. Of noise and distractions. But Carlos Sainz appendix giving out meant Oli Behrman came in and it was a real opportunity to show what he could do. However, with only one practice session to get to grips with the unstable horse, it was a tall order. It's a Ferrari. It's a shitbox. Qualifying was once again a rather uneventful affair with Behrman knocked out just in Q2 with the big players all making it through to Q3 and Max securing pole in one lap. Bruh, he is too good, man. It's taking the piss. That motherfucker back there is not real. Now for the final Saturday start of the year, the lights went out and Max Verstappen raced out in front. Shocking, I know. Behind him, Perez and Leclerc had a little fight with a monogas coming out on top for the time being. Norris looked to have jumped the start, but in all honesty, he just made it a whole lot worse for himself, even if it was his plan before the race. So what can you do tomorrow then? <laughs> I have no idea. Jump the start. Further back and the tractor of Gasly decided to go even more in support of the farmers by going on strike, retiring the Frenchman for the race. Ah, il ne marche pas. Further up the field and Perez uses that rocket ship to get up past Leclerc and give us another Red Bull 1-2. Please, Danny! That is a fuck! Fucking little bastard! Then on lap 8, Lance Stroll provided the second retirement of the season by crashing Daddy's car into the wall and getting sassy to his mechanic about it. Okay, can you bring it back, Lance? No, oh, the f what? Now, Daddy's money smacking the wall brought out the safety car, which of course caused chaos in the pit lane, with many coming in to change tyres. But not Lando Norris. He stayed out and became the second driver this year to lead a race. Which went well. And it's all too much uh, for little Lando Norris. Magnussen then couldn't quite figure out how to get past Albon, so smacked his tyre and then ran off the track, for which he was then given a 10 second penalty because he didn't give the place back. This of course meant he had fuck all chance of getting into the point and might as well spend the rest of the race pissing off the drivers behind him. So that's exactly what he did. He became Kevin Magnussen the massive as he managed to make that Haskar as wide as the fucking track to keep half the grid behind him so Hulkenberg could score Hass a point. Fucking weapon. That man is a god. And of course, it all ended with a Red Bull 1-2 and Charles Leclerc in third. So what does this all mean for the championship? Well, Max Verstappen and Red Bull increased their lead over everyone with another dominant weekend. I fucking knew it! Perez does his job getting a solid P2 and securing himself more in that second championship slot. Piastri had an impressive race taking P4, putting even more pressure on Mercedes to stop being so wank. Oh! That's not gone well. The star of the weekend, Oli Behrman, put on an impressive display to take P7 and sit himself 10th in the Drivers' Championship. And now we wait to see if Haas will be able to tie with the rookie by the end of the year. I don't know, Jeff. And the most important result of the weekend, P10, went to Nico Hülkenberg. So well done if you predicted that one. Now on to the news, and we start this week with Christian Horner. I briefly touched on this last week as his wang had allegedly been leaked, but the story just keeps getting more twisted and fucked. So let's start at the beginning, which is allegedly during December, where Christian Horner was offered the chance to step down and save face, as Red Bull seemed to know some issues were coming. 
He chose not to do so. So about a week before testing, the news broke that Horney was under investigation. Now, of course, this caused mass speculation within the cesspool of shite that is Twitter. But nothing was really concrete, so it was all speculation until the first race weekend when the internal investigation was completed and Horner was deemed to not have acted inappropriately. But this is where shit really hit the fan, as less than 24 hours later, the supposed evidence being used in the Horner case was sent to everyone and their nan within the paddock. From journalists to team principals to that fuckwit Stefan at the top, they all got a dick pic from the Red Bull team principal. This, of course, started even more speculation. Twitter went from a cesspool of shite to an atomic bomb in seconds. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to whether or not these are real, and I'm not going to speculate because how the fuck am I supposed to know? But what I am going to do is just highlight one of these many, many messages, and it's probably the one you have seen the most, but just had a bowl of Cocoa Pops, now getting ready for bed. If these messages are real, we don't need any more evidence. Lock him up immediately. No 50-year-old man should be having Cocoa Pops for dinner. Lock him up, put him on a register. Thank me later. Righty. Anyway, it didn't end here, as over the Bahrain race weekend, things got very tinfoil hat. Jos Verstappen was seen arguing with Christian Horner, and then came out and said he's a mega bellend. And I mean, fairs, but when you're in a glass house and all, it's, you know. Then there were reports of if Horner goes, so do Verstappen and Yui. Then Max was seen talking to Toto, which sent Twitter into a feeding frenzy, because obviously them having a conversation means Max Verstappen is joining Mercedes. Horner then got yanked off the pit wall to go to the principal's office to get a bollocking for sending dick pics. The day before International Women's Day, Red Bull decided to suspend the Red Bull employee, who Horner had originally sent his hog to, while Horner got to Billy Big Bollocks around the paddock like nothing happened. Helmut Marco got told by Red Bull to shut his gob because apparently he was the one who leaked the WhatsApp folder in a supposed retaliation to Christian Horner trying to force him out, which meant Red Bull were on the verge of firing the Austrian, which is insane because he finally comes out with something in support of a victim rather than making someone a victim, and that's when he's almost fired. What the fuck? And finally, it was reported that Horner paid out $700,000 in a settlement, which then Red Bull topped up to $1 million. And I wonder if that will be included in the cost cap. I don't know, Jeff. In conclusion, if you eat Cocoa Pops for dinner and you're not a broke uni student, you like kids. Moving on. I'm getting the word... Nuts. Saudi Arabia has announced Mario Kart is coming to F1. Kind of. They released this trailer for a new track which is supposedly coming to the F1 grid in 2030 and features elevation changes of 108 meters. Righty. And finally, Massa has officially started his lawsuit against the FIA for the 2008 title. And for the sake of the sport, I really hope he loses this or the can of worms this opens. Ah, oh, my brain cannot handle it. In a bit. 